Hey, everybody, it's Steve Garvin, and I am joined by my friend Dory Staley and her drums. <laughs> They're everywhere. <laughs> Dory was just giving me a little tour of the room in which she is sitting with, I don't know how many drums and drumsticks and so forth, but but in a way, you could probably say that drums have kind of uh, taken over your life, right? <laughs> taken over my life in every room of this house, yes. <laughs> so uh, one of the things that I know about you is that you got an MBA, and I'm pretty sure that you didn't get an MBA in drumming. <laughs> so I'm wondering, how did you, one, what what did you get your MBA in, what was, and what was that part of your life like? Oh, it's funny that you should ask, Steve, because most people don't realize this. And here goes all those dumb drummer jokes. And there are a lot of them. <laughs> For example, what did the drummer get on his IQ test? Ready? Drool. There we go. <laughs> and so people don't realize that. Yes, in my former life, BK before kids, I had an MBA in finance and I was actually in international banking. My first job was for a large bank on Wall Street. <laughs> and later on, I got recruited to work in uh, the department of a, a French bank. So yes, I was in the international department of an American bank on Wall Street and then the French bank recruited me and uh, it was like corporate lending. We, we had a portfolio in the billions and we were just writing up, you know, loan proposals and things. And uh, it was kind of cool at the time, really left-brained activities mm. though, very analytical. It was kind of glamorous in a way because the French bank was right on Rockefeller Plaza mm. overlooking the skating rink. We had, get ready, a French chef on staff so, you know, if you got invited to the executive dining room, you were going to eat pretty well. They were five course meals, you know, with wine in every course and all. Mm. Good luck trying to go back to work after that. <laughs> <laughs> but we did get to travel and entertain clients and things like that. But uh, it just wasn't creative enough for me at the time. And I thought, well, this was fun, but I needed to move on. So uh, that's when I left the rat race of New York City and started focusing on other activities. Fast okay. forward many, many years later, our, our kids asked to be homeschooled. We discovered that they were very musical and I became actually a booking agent and promoter. Really? <laughs> so one of my first businesses was Next Stage Entertainment. I found, groomed and booked over 900 local young bands and solo artists and I watched their backs so they didn't get ripped off. Wow. So I needed to help them out. And, and that was a load of fun, too. And then I figured, hey, why should the kids have all the fun? And I decided <laughs> to check off, learn how to play drums. I <laughs> checked that off my bucket list. I auditioned for a rock and church band on bongos and congas, you know, what are over here. Mm. But they had a really big setup, like a kid in a candy store. And I had no experience and no lessons. I just knew I had rhythm in me. I'm a former dancer. <laughs> And so I know I can tap out with my feet. Can I do it with my hands? So mm. I signed up to audition and I'm sure they didn't know that I didn't know what I was doing because I just went in there and I winged it. <laughs> I waited for the beat to kick in and it was like, oh Lord, help me. the beats that are in my head come through my hands at the right time so I don't make a complete fool of myself. <laughs> and I guess I did okay because I passed the audition and I was with them for about 13 years and later began playing with local cover bands and solo artists. And I do get asked to play with uh, different local church bands as well, using different instruments, in including djembe, cajon, which is the box drum, bongos and congas, whatever they need, shakers, tambourine. <laughs> I just jump in. I don't read music. I can, but I choose not to. I just hmm. play by ear and go for it. Wow. So, there you go. That's quite a transition. And I, my guess is, is that one of the ways that, one of the things that enabled you to watch your drummers back the, while you were doing the next stage drumming was the, the finance background that you had. And so you could see whether they were getting ripped off or not, right? Well, that was the thing. It was so interesting. And even 
some of the older bands too, because I was working with teens and college bands in the beginning. And then we kind of segued there. And a lot of these uh, creatives, they just want to work on their music. They don't want to work on the business side at all. Mm. So they weren't paying attention to their numbers. They weren't paying attention to inventory. Like how many t-shirts and CDs did you start with? What was this? What was your cash box? What did, what money did you start with? What did you end with? What was your profit? They weren't keeping track of those things. So they had no idea how much money they were making. They didn't know what to charge if somebody wanted to book them. So they were like, oh, we'll play for anything. I'm like, no, 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 don't tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> so I would go in and negotiate on their behalf. Okay. To make sure that they got paid a fair amount. And I didn't care how old they were. To me, that didn't matter. If they were super talented, then they needed to get paid. And they needed to get paid well enough for the amount of time that they were performing and things like that i also factored in other expenses because nobody thought about that it's just like sure. when you're running a business i tried to tell them this is your music business at some point in time you won't need me anymore and you'll go off on your own so i want you to make sure that you know how to read contracts mm. and if i book them for a concert because sometimes i would do the whole show and have band between three and five bands at a show I did a lot of teen band nights. That was the teen band night program for about five different cities. Those were monthly shows. And I would give them my contracts just to make sure that they knew. And I would always sneak in something really funny to see if they were paying <laughs> attention. And I, we would have a band meeting before the show to make sure I got everybody's contracts and they were signed and dated because I wanted them to get used to that process. I said, oh, by the way, did anybody read uh, item number seven? What? Yeah, the part about if you didn't show up on time, you have to feed Miss Dory's cat when she's on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> or I put in, you have to wash my car, you know. Oh, no. And I said, see, that shows me that somebody else could have snuck something by you and you wouldn't have even noticed. You were just like signing your life away. Mm. A lot of these artists, their parents would contact me. Oh, Dory, we got somebody from Nashville looking at my son or daughter. Oh, this is so exciting. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't sign anything. Mm. Let me let me first research this person to make sure that they are legit. A lot of times they weren't. There are a lot of scam artists out there that were going after the young artists because they figured they're naive. Mm, they don't know yeah. any better. They want to they'll grab any show you give them or any opportunity. And like, whoa, 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 did you realize that at one point here it says that the management company is going to take 50% of your daughter's earnings in perpetuity. Mm. Yeah, they didn't teach me any of this stuff in the MBA program, just to let you know, none of it. Right. <laughs> this was like back in the Jurassic era when I was one of five women in the whole program. Wow. I'm not kidding. It, they didn't teach anything about uh, any online anything because it didn't even exist. We're talking the 80s, you know? And, and as far as the music thing, no, it was an MBA in finance. So I learned about banking and stuff like that and inventory accounting procedures. None of that came into play. I just knew to make sure that I knew percentages. I could do them in my head in a venue to make sure, let's see, I'm doing a scan and I would group people um, based in you know groups of 10. Okay, looks like there's 200 people in the room and cover charge with this. We should be going, you guys should be going home with that. They never did that. Hmm. They just, they just took whatever the venue gave them at the end of the night and even knowing if it was accurate. <laughs> mm. So when they booked shows on their own, you know, I wanted to train them at least. And that's why I call myself a mentor because I didn't charge them for any of this. I wow. really didn't. You know, if we, if I did a team band night, yeah, I got paid an hourly rate for the number of hours I put in. But when, when we did concerts in large venues, I was lucky if I went home with gas money, you know? <laughs> But they got a lot of the management advice for free at that point. But I wanted them to know. And as far as the, uh, the whole contract deal in perpetuity, you, and that's what happened to some of the artists like uh, Scotty McCreary and some of the others. When they were young, they signed on with a manager, not knowing that that manager had the rights to their income as long as they were in the entertainment business, even if they weren't their manager anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are things, you know, contract you have to really look at. So yeah, I, I I tried creating a program, coaching program for musicians uh, after my accident. We'll get into that in a little bit. But I find that most older musicians don't want to be coached because they, they think they know everything. So no, I've been doing this for years. I know what I'm doing. I'm like, okay, fine. 
but the young <laughs> ones, I did want to make sure that the they didn't get taken advantage of. They knew a little bit about the music business so that if they ever did get signed, and some of them did, or they toured on their own, and a lot of them did that, they would at least know what pitfalls to look out for. I mean, I would give them all kinds of little tips even about, you know, guard your gear, guard the cash box, and all kinds of stuff that they just, you know, they, they just want to play. Right. So, so yeah, the business side of uh, music, a lot of people don't realize is something that's very important. You got to know your numbers. You got to keep know your deductions, things you can take, things that you can't, and and how much money you got bringing it, you're coming in and going out. <laughs> sure. You know, and it's interesting how much that applies to pretty much any business too. You yes. know, whatever stage you're at, that you know, even when we were, I was in the finance department at a major multi-billion dollar corporation, you know, it was the accountants that were watching the money flow through. The, the purchasing department would, would buy all the stuff. And they definitely had kind of limits as to how much, you know, they could spend and, and they were watched, but their focus was on buying the stuff. It wasn't on, you know, so much on the expense side of it even though the two are very much related to one another. You know, I, I mean, it's just, you've got to have, it's why it, it's important to either be, watch the numbers yourself or have someone on, on board who can watch the numbers for you and to have conversations with them so you understand what's going on with them. Because don't, don't just hand your shoebox to your accountant and say, okay, you take care of it because it's your money. Exactly. And there was a period of time that I did coach some female entrepreneurs and I, I told them the same things that I wanted. Yes, I can give you all the biz tips till the cows come home, but I, I want to teach you some of these things and how to do them so that when you hire somebody to do it for you, you will know if they're ripping you off or not from, you know, social media to setting up your, your Facebook page and and what else did we do? Branding, uh, did a lot of things about branding and then mindset issues. And that's when the drumming came in actually. Hmm. Then I realized that a lot of these women wanted to sign up for some you know, quick fix kind of thing. Hmm. I've even done ADHD coaching. You know, That was actually my first business in 1995, Next Stage Educational Services. Hmm. And I was getting a lot of very bright and creative kids that people wanted to put on Ritalin and Adderall or whatever, you know, the stimulant du jour, you know, a lot of them have been taken off the market. What does that say? Uh, but the, what was happening was not what people thought. And I looked at the underlying issues that were causing the symptoms. Hmm. And then much later, I added in a little bit of drum therapy. I was using hand drums interactive where the, the student would have one and I would have one and I created special techniques because I realized that when I was drumming with the band the very first rehearsals I was like whoa this feels great I can focus really well and it was both energizing and relaxing at the same time and mm. I remember the kids telling me that's how Riddle and Adderall worked I went ha so I've got like a natural solution <laughs> Huh. The ADHD symptoms. And I always joke that ADD stands for a delightful dreamer. And ADHD in my book is a definitely hyper drummer. And I'm both. <laughs> <laughs> and so I can relate to these kids because I was one. I was the kid that was always tapping and moving and shaking. By the way, what do they call CEOs? Movers and shakers, mm. right? Right. They were moving and shaking as kids, guaranteed. Well, now they have a staff that helps them do the things that they don't like to do or that they're really not gifted in. And they, they hand that off so that they can be in their genius zone and do their creative things and all that. So yeah, I started sneaking in drumming for the sessions with female entrepreneurs and noticed that they were getting instant clarity. Hmm. To the point where they would go home and start cleaning out their closets. And I thought, well, that's an interesting side effect. I didn't see that one coming. But I told them that makes total sense because we just cleared out what I call the static in the attic, hmm. you know, all those racing thoughts and all that mental clutter. And we just cleared it away with the drumming. Hmm. And then they went home and that manifested itself into the need to clear physical clutter. 
So I started partnering with like professional organizers and saying, I see some synergy here. <laughs> I see some potential for referrals on both sides. Huh. Because usually, uh, you know, people who have a lot of clutter at home, in many cases, not all, they tend to have, you know, some, some serious ADHD traits. Again, I don't like the label because I see it as a superpower. Mm -hmm. It's a power that needs to be harnessed, though, so that you can focus better, you can get some strategies under your belt, so that you can set your goals and get time management techniques in there. And I would teach both the, the gals and the young students all of this so that they have the tools that they needed to succeed. And this was the best tool at all. It really of all it really was because it worked so quickly and so effectively, and it stuck with them even after they were done with their you know sessions with me. Some of them only went for a month, but now I only do three month programs because they found that we need that amount of time to make the different corrections and just get used to things and get into the rhythm and find your groove. How many mm. musical analogies can she throw in here? <laughs> but it's true it really is backed by science and it's loads of fun it's so easy to do and people are just amazed because they have no idea when they see this room you know or when they even hear me talk about oh you know i do drumming or they dory the drum chick is my nickname they think oh i can't do that you know i, I can't play that full drum set that's mm. not what this is mm. <laughs> it's not a drum lesson it's something huh. completely different. There's a whole field of study called drum therapy. I, I have had training with two international organizations. I'm certified as the one and only certified drum therapist in North Carolina huh. and most of the South. There's a couple in Nashville. But yeah, it's a relatively new field. So people aren't going to Google you know, drum therapy because most people haven't heard it. They assume they know what it is but it's not a drum lesson and it's not a drum circle. It's so what is it about drumming that, that creates these positive benefits, the, the cleaner closets and the more organized life and so forth? Well, it's interesting uh, how the science behind this works. There's a couple of things going on. I also, well, obviously I specialize in kids and adults with ADHD traits because I've got a very solid background. I have my own 20 year uh, research on what really causes ADHD. I used to present it a lot. It was called mm. the gifted ADHD connection because they found out that a lot of these kids have really high IQs. Mm. Nobody was looking for that. They were, you know, everything looks like a nail hole and all you have is a hammer, you know. They're, they kind of didn't focus on, let's look at the big picture. Sure. So when you're drumming, unlike like guitar, and bass, um, violin drumming you're using your hands both hands a lot and you're moving them a lot so it's full brain and body integration mm. so in a lot of my studies i found out that because i worked with hundreds of kids and i would always test their brain dominance first because i needed to know i'm always creating my own programs because that's how i roll and they're always customized so even back when i was tutoring i needed to know if they were right or left brain dominant because I would teach them differently. Hmm. And 99% of them were right brain dominant. Hmm. Your left brain kids, they're really good in math because math and language are on the left side of your brain. Sure. Rhythms on the right. Hmm. So the further you go on the left and right brain continuum, okay, science geeks, we're going there. Yeah, like a timeline. You know, your, your left brain sequential types, your accountants, your actuaries, you know, people who think step by step. And, and the further you go to the right, you got those of us who think in pictures, not words or numbers. So it mm. takes time to convert those pictures into words or numbers. So we don't always do well on time tests, mm. but that doesn't mean we're not right. Right. In fact, most of them had IQs of 150 plus plus. Mm. Hello. So yeah what it does is it wakes up that left side of the brain so now we have integrated it actually is called brain integration i do mm -hmm. work with a lot of special needs kids and adults so parents are familiar with that term you are now connecting the left and right side of the brain so they they function better and it's more balanced so now you can focus better nice 
And so a lot of people have told me, I had one client recently, I'm working with her later on this afternoon. She's been taking several sessions with me. And after like the first session, she, was, she said, oh my gosh, I had so many ideas for my business. She mapped out strategy. She said, that's never happened before. Mm. It was like it unlocks a block. Mm. Mm -hmm. So whatever's blocking you, it just clears it away and boom. And then boom, 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 boom. She had everything all lined up. I was like, oh, there we go. Huh. So yeah, so it does oh. help with brain integration and the sound waves also have been known to promote healing and i am a walking testimonial for that hmm. so tell me two things one so if you're left brain dominant and you're doing drumming that helps create more balance between the left and the right and if you're right brain dominant then it would help create more balance with with the left so the the creative and the analytical side kind of um, find a, a happy medium Exactly. And that's why drumming is used a lot with corporate team building. I have a lot of friends who do that. And I've done some as well, because I'm also a motivational and inspirational speaker. So they get a twofer. <laughs> I always <laughs> ask them, you know, what kind of uh, issues are you dealing with? And I will create a talk for that organization. Sure. And we will talk and then everybody will drum with me. Well, now it's virtual. So they have to kind of drum on their legs, but I can still do these activities. And I tell them that it not only helps uh, the whole team work better together because now you're speaking the same language and you're on the beat together, but it also helps boost creativity. Mm. So you're more left brain types that are kind of just, just the facts man. <laughs> I call them the just the facts man people where everything's mm -hmm. gotta be a certain way. Everything's black and white, there is no gray. And then yeah. you got the creatives. It's like a party in my head all day long. <laughs> and we're like, ideas, ideas. We have so many ideas. We don't know how to, how to implement them or finish them. Well, we got lots of ideas. Yes. yes. <laughs> the brain never shuts off. So for those that have trouble, though, generating those creative ideas, we help unlock those. Mm. So it's and then for those that have a million process. ideas going on, it's like, how do you order them so that they get completed, right? Right. I tell people it, it lines things up. It's almost like chiropractic without the cracking. Because, <laughs> you know, it kind of goes boom, 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 boom. And you almost, people have told me when I used to be able to come out live and in person, I would drum behind them even with uh, a Native American buffalo drum. Mm. It has really good vibrations. Right? And it's got some major sound waves and I would go behind them with that and they would go, whoa, because they could feel it through their bodies. And I would tell them, wait a few days and check in, let's see if anything happened. And of course they were already drumming with me the whole time using one of my djembes and we would just do different techniques mm. with that. But uh, the sound waves do permeate through your body and do realign things. And that's how I was healed after my freak accident in 2011. Huh. Wow. So two things I'm curious about. One, the, how drumming helped with the, the accident. The other thing is, is when you're in finance, whether that was, you know, working on your MBA or getting ready to do your MBA or while you're working for the banks, did you feel like you were in alignment there? Or did there was there uh, kind of a, you know, did you feel like you're marching to the beat of a different drummer? That's a great question. Actually, what happened was I didn't feel like I was in alignment at all. It felt like something was missing. And to be perfectly honest, the creative side of me was, was, was literally crying. Mm -hmm. like every time I went in there, Steve, whether I was, you know, taking the path train into Wall Street, it was just like a sea of gray suits. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, you go into even at the French bank, okay, you had some more uh, interesting elements there, but it was still, you know, check out the boxes, put all your ducks in a row, do things our way or no way, you know, Yes. and I would just sit there thinking, I don't want to work, just want to bang on a drum all day, <laughs> you know, and I just, the creative side of me was like, oh, I need something else, something is really missing. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I gave up 
my creativity mm. in favor of the almighty dollar. Yeah. It was the 80s, folks, you know, right? St a line straight out of that movie, Wall Street. Yeah. It is good. You know, how much money can we make? And how you yes. climb the corporate ladder? And then I realized that Judy Collins, right? Is that all there is? Mm, yes. It wasn't enough anymore. Uh, it was glamorous. The money was great. Traveling was great. But I thought, I'm making companies money. You know, we're loaning huge amounts of money to corporations. I'm making the bank money. But this isn't feeding my soul, and it's certainly mm. not really blessing anyone. Mm. Am I really using my gifts the way God intended? Right. Mm, yeah. Right? Some so of friend, yeah, it's, it was a tough choice. So a friend of mine uh, who I came to me, we worked together, and she said, Dory, guess what? I said, what? She says, there's a dance studio right around the corner. You want to give it a try? You're a former dancer, right? You really need to check it out. Phil mm. Black, do you know who he is? And I went, no. She said, he trained the flash dance double. Oh, wow. She goes, I think you need to go for it. So oh. I did. So I would go to work and I would have like my leotard in a bag and I would run into the ladies room and I would put my leotard on and underneath my suit because back in those days, women wore suits. They were like, you know, jackets and skirts and things but it was still a suit that was before the uh, Hillary Clinton made the pantsuit a, a thing <laughs> and I would go to the dance studio with my with my leotard underneath and I'd show up and these these young girls would be looking at me like who's the banker you know <laughs> <laughs> but it's my day job it's my day job and then I would have to you know go into this dance class I was in my 20s but uh, and a lot of these girls were much younger and there was Phil Black and his motto mm -hmm. was you can pass my dance classes. You can pass any audition. Let's see what you got, kid. He was really tough. So mm. I started in the back of the line. Even though when I, when I was younger, I was always in the front. Because if you're, you're in the front, you're really good. They mm. only give the front line to the best dancers. Because mm. that means the, the other dancers can follow you. Stuck in the back. And I'm thinking, this stinks. I'm going to make it my way up to the front. And we're going to prove this guy wrong. And I did. Mm, wow. So he said, all right, kid, you did it. Congratulations. <laughs> and then I realized, guess what? I'm now too old to actually be in the uh, in, uh, uh, in theater because mm. I kind of missed the window. So do you know what they call a dancer in New York City? No. Hey, waitress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because all of these young gals were waitressing during the day. And I said, I waitressed my way through college. I am not going back to that. I'm making good money at the bank. And I had to really decide. But in the end, what I did was I actually quit the job at the bank. Mm. And I just went back home and you know started working. And I still in finance, but in a sales capacity. And uh, then decided it was time to start a family. And, and that's when I became an entrepreneur. Hmm. That was my plan B. I was actually an accidental entrepreneur, but it worked out uh, pretty well, nevertheless. So you never know. You just never know what opportunities will open up. You never know how you can use your gifts. I mean, this is a very, very unusual thing that I'm doing here. First of all, female drummer started very late in life. I was 47 when I auditioned for the church band. With no really? And no lessons, nothing. And then uh, I was 62 when I taught, no, yeah, 60 when I taught myself how to play drums. Wow. So, uh, so yeah, I, I had no idea that learning how to play would actually take me off the stage though, hmm. because I, I knew that that was no longer serving me and using my gifts because I don't know if I can go into the whole faith based thing, but God told me it's time. Yeah. And it was time to stop like being either, I was always either in the back of the stage or with the band, literally on the side stage, mm. pushing them. So I was like, okay, I've got to stop backing up others and kind of use this gift in the way that it was supposed to be used. Because I knew that I was seeing people being healed, but mm. I didn't believe it. I thought, mm. oh, that's interesting. And then, and then after I was healed, I said, all right, this, this is really bizarre i mean people are not i don't know what to do with this but let's see how far we can take this and let's see what happens 
Sure. And the results kept getting better and better, even virtually, which I was amazed. Mm. Um, I just didn't expect that it would be so effective and it would work so quickly because most of the studies out there involving drumming, there it's a like a 10 week protocol of drumming in a group setting. Mm. And they weren't getting the same results that I was getting, but they also weren't using it for the same types of populations that I was. So I thought, wow, okay, well, I'm gonna do my own thing. I created my own lane. Nice. It's drum therapy with a twist, because we always close out with a rock and tune. Mm. And I created my own exercises because I needed to know what would work with different populations. So I have a whole ton of them now. Wow. We should patent them, but um, <laughs> I'm just going with, you know, going with my gut and what God's been telling me to do all along. I resisted at first, but finally embraced my gifts and realized it's now or never. I'm not getting any younger. So right. why the heck not? So one of the things that I know about you is that you've written two books. Yep. The first one, Find Your Rhythm, and the last one, which you just published, like, last month or yeah february is uh rise up and rock right <laughs> which has got a great cover i mean it's like totally <laughs> oh wait i happen to have it right here <laughs> there you go hey <laughs> yeah the um the gal desiree bonner who helped me with the book we were trying to decide she did uh, all the editing and things and, and formatting and and also the cover design. I said, I can't wait to see what you come up with. So she said, give me a couple ideas of what you're looking for. So I was sending her stock photos and, you know, she made a pretty cover. She goes, but I think it needs to be this. And she sends me the cover. I went, oh, not another book with my picture on the cover. People are going to think I'm, I'm full of myself, right? <laughs> she said, but it fits. I love this picture. She had seen it before. It was actually taken a few years ago. She mm so much energy and so much joy and it really you know gives people an idea of of your your energy and your vibe I'm like, okay. yeah and she goes and it matches the content of the book i'm like okay so we That's did awesome. take a vote and, and it did win so she was right <laughs> well i think it's a great cover and i i love your energy too it, the total rise up and rock uh, i have been a resonating with rock since I was probably old enough to turn on the radio. You know, back when I was in grade school, all the, well, not all the kids, but there was a group of kids who were really into Kiss and, you know, <laughs> they had all the, you know, they had the action figures, they had the, you know, the, the albums, the stickers, all that kind of stuff. I was a little bit to the side with that, but that was definitely more, my style than the, I don't know, the Chicago or the Barry Manilow or whatever else was on the other side. Exactly. That's why most of my friends are dudes <laughs> because of my musical taste, even in high school. You know, all my, my girlfriends were listening to Barry Manilow and I'm like, you know, David Bowie and, <laughs> and I don't know who else I was listening to, Black Sabbath, believe it or not. Mm, yeah. And, uh, yeah, back in the day and now she plays in church bands folks so hallelujah there you go there's hope for me yet <laughs> it's all good it's all good but i'm wondering one how how did drumming and how did writing these books help you with your purpose and helping you find your rhythm not just with the drums but in life right well it's interesting because after the accident, I knew I wanted to help people rise up and move forward. But I started speaking, and this is a good tip for anybody who wants to do any speaking. I started speaking too soon. I started getting out there before I allowed the whole accident to get out of my system, both physically mm -hmm. and emotionally. Sure. So I found that I wasn't quite ready to deliver my message. And my message was more like, make your mess your message kind of thing which right, is yes. quote, but it's a good one to let people know that even if something bad happens you have a choice you can either stay down or you can choose to get up and right. i chose to get up and rock the next stage 
all of my businesses, by the way, have had the words next stage in them. So there's a little play on words there. <laughs> I mean, the next stage of your life, not putting people on the physical stage. Sure. So I, I went out there too soon. I'm glad I waited, wrote the book after I knew, okay, now I'm ready. How can I help others move forward? And I gave them loads of tips. Find Your Divine Rhythm is actually, uh, the subtitle is a, what is it? A creative success formula. It's a business mm. blueprint for creatives mm. and musicians. And a lot of entrepreneurs bought the book too. So it has a lot of, uh, of those step-by-step -step kind of things, what you need to do to line things up. I also talked about mindset, uh, ADHD issues, so in case they, and I talked about depression because mm. somebody has to go there and address yeah. it because yep. I found that it, whether it's kids or adults, there's such a high incidence of depression in the creative fields. It's almost a given, unfortunately, but I wanted to let people know it doesn't have to be that way. Mm. Yes. You can leave all that behind and you can move forward and you can figure out the gifts and talents that you've been given have been given to you for a reason. And guess what? It's not about you. Mm. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of the young guys with the wood. <laughs> it's about your audience, your, your followers, your fans, or your clients. It's about them. It's about using your gifts to bless others. So once you can wrap your brain around that, then you can realize, all right, how can I use my gifts to make a difference? Mm. Yes, you can make a solid impact, income, but I also wanted people to make an impact. Yes. Because especially now in these times between COVID and all the unrest and everything that's going on, people need your gifts more than ever. They need encouragement. They need to know that you rose up and now you can help others. You know, they always say, you know, give somebody a hand. I would tell people you can either give up or you can reach up. And I reached mm. up and I said, God, I got nothing. Mm. I don't know what else to do. I mean, after the accident, I lost everything, you know, <laughs> physically, emotionally. Um, I, my savings, I blew through all of that because I, I quit my job thinking I'll be better in two weeks. Well, it took mm. three years to heal and nobody knew mm. what the heck it was. So I'm glad that I discovered what it was. And between drumming and divine intervention, where God said, use the drums, Dory. I thought, oh, on me? Duh, the plumber always has a leaky faucet, you know? <laughs> okay, there's something. Oh, I'm supposed to be using the drums for healing, not like, you know, hamming it up on stage. Although that mm. is kind of fun. <laughs> but wow. yeah, so at this stage of my life, it's time for me to do something different. And I think a lot of people out there need to realize that you can do different things at different times of your life. That was your purpose then. But sometimes that changes, especially if something gets, you know, thrown at you from left field, you're going to have to pivot. Yeah. And find a different purpose and find a different way to use your gifts. It doesn't mean that you, you can just throw it all away. It just means that, you know, I might just change things a little bit. Look at me. I'm, I'm working virtually now internationally. <laughs> mm -hmm. I thought, oh my gosh, once COVID hit and, and everything went away for, from performing to to doing my classes in person. I had like five on the books every month gone to any speaking gigs, anything that I had lined up, choom, 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 they were just all knocked out of the park, gone. Mm. Thought, oh, same question to God, now what? Right. Fortunately, I remembered I was using Zoom before it became a thing. <laughs> Should have bought the <laughs> stock in Zoom in the very beginning, wow, who knew? But yeah, you don't know that a lot of the things that you that you want to do you already have all the elements you need mm. either inside of you or right in front of you like with the drums there sure. could be people right in front of you that you just never even thought oh that person can help me or it might be a random acquaintance i've had people i'm not making this up steve who have actually sent me checks that i barely know for your drum ministry i mean they, <laughs> it's like mm. i was getting checks in the mail uh, toka percussion. I said, hey, look, I'm doing this thing. I got this program. I work with a lot of kids. Uh, can you help me out here? And they said, what do you need? I was like, what? 
Yeah. And then they said, welcome to the Toka family. And I became an endorsed Toka percussion artist, which is something usually reserved only for touring musicians. So wow. that was really nice of them. They're great guys. And, you know, so I, I can use, the, I've been using their drums all along anyway. I, you know, I've been promoting them like crazy. I, my first book, I'm holding the, I didn't plan it that way, but their logo's front and center. So <laughs> I've been an ambassador for Toka for quite some time. But I like I used to tell my bands, you don't ask, you don't get. Mm -hmm. They would always say, "How do you get us so much money and all these perks and blah blah blah?" And because I ask, mm. <laughs> so, so, you know, the worst they can say is no, right? <laughs> you don't ask, you will never know. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. So, what are some parting thoughts that you would like to share with our listening audience today? What how can they rise up and rock or find their divine rhythm? Well, first, I would remind everyone that you're never too old and it's never too late to rock what you got. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be like literally rocking in a band kind of thing, but, you know, rock the talents and gifts you've been given. It's not too late. I, you know, started a lot of this very late in life. I'm really not a, a super professional writer who had a writing career. I just thought, I think I'd like to write a book to help people. Mm. <laughs> and so one book and then I wrote the next book. And, you know, that that helps with speaking gigs and things like that, because I have something to draw from. I have something that they can take home. So don't discount your gifts. Don't think, oh, anybody can do that. There's chances are they can't. Don't think, oh, there's a million people out there doing what I'm doing because nobody does it like you. Right. There's a lot of drummers out there, but nobody's doing things the way I'm doing them. I got my own little spin on things, created my own lane. Why not? That's awesome. So go for it. Thank you. And for those of you, for those who would like to get a copy of your book or to do some drum therapy or, or whatever, what is the best way for them to connect with you and, and Sure. We, they can go to my website, nextstagedrumming.com, and you can find all kinds of great info on there from my, my virtual classes and sessions to what is drum therapy exactly. I also have a free gift uh, available. If you sign up for it, I will send you a free video, how to beat stress and boost your mindset in five minutes or less. And you don't need to have a drum to follow along the exercises. But in the video, I also offer a lot of encouragement because a lot of my sessions are a unique combination of mentoring, motivation, and of course, the drumming. So I say things during the session to help people see uh, possibilities and so that they can see what I see. Because I, I always see some really cool things for people that they haven't even thought of. So yeah, nextstagedrumming.com. My book is also on Amazon. If you wanted to hop over there, rise up and rock activating your God-given purpose. <laughs> nice. Thank you, Dory. It's been a pleasure. Let's sure. go out and rock, right? <laughs> yeah, thanks for inviting me. And folks, if you haven't joined Steve's group, The Art of Entrepreneurship, I would highly encourage you to do so. He asks these great thought-provoking questions for the group. So it's, it's quite different than a lot of the other groups out there. Should we close out with a drum roll or a little drum beat? Let's do that, yes. <laughs> no. Thank you, Dory. Sure thing. Have a great day, everybody. Keep on rocking. Absolutely. All right.